Alright, jumping into this, we are just going to delete the cube and bring in a cylinder. 32 rounds will do, as usual, our favorite poison. And I'm just going to drag this side back. And because we're in edit mode, we didn't change our scale, as I can see over on the side. Otherwise, I would go back into object mode and apply my scale before beveling. And let's just begin giving ourselves some trouble. So I'm going to jump over to circle. And let's collapse that and enable dots and in the latest version of 3.0 the reverse bevel is supposed to be fixed however I'm using 2.91 because I just got driven crazy by it so this is our basic shape that we're starting out with today and what we'll do is shift click smart apply in order to clone this and let's just bring this above and also with the bottom we're just going to need to select that extra bevel we added and dissolve that in order to flatten it out. And we're going to be going for something like this for our first solve. In fact, we could even take it further, but let's um, start off here. So we're just going to union these together and let's just apply our visual geometry. And we see that we've already put ourselves in a troublesome area where we have basically a double curve situation happening. So in order to allow ourselves the freedom to do whatever we want with this area, we need to first set some boundaries. So I'm going to select this loop and let's just solely our bevel, meaning that I'm going to press control B, roll one segment, press P, set my profile to one, and then I can press A to go back and edit it. And now we can basically use the bevel to space geometry. So I'm going to select this entire loop, bring it over, bevel it again in order to space that out and the, the marked lines don't matter because we can just unmark them or resharp correct them later but they're just there you just ignore them at this time because we're playing a whole different game because we could always just get this to the bevel and call it a day but our goal is to get it to survive subdivision and then call it a day so I'm gonna press K and we're just gonna begin drawing in the flow that's actually needed for this particular area. Maybe something like that. And let's also divide our work in half because, you know, it's just too long to do it otherwise. And let's just begin making some connections. So as long as there's something there to hold the integrity of the surface, you can get away with being a little bit flexible as you see me being with the surface at this time. You know, sometimes you have to make really hard decisions like that one. If you want to have it solved, if you want to have it uh, solve itself onto a triangle, or if you actually want to get it all the way to the destination. So it's always just a uh, thinking game whenever it comes to dealing with geometry, just how do you want to deal with it? Where do you want to mitigate your pressure points to? How bad do you want it to be all quads? For me, I've realized that I just want to survive subdivision. And so that's our goal today. In fact, you know, first we started off talking about some fundamentals, but now survival is going to be all that we can um, aim for at this point. So a little sliding, never G to move, just double G. You, you press G, you're a goner, G for goner. Um, but definitely want to double tap G in order to slide things around. Because as long as you're skating on the surface, you have the surface. But once you move things, you've lost your connection with the surface. And we have to start talking about shrink wrap and getting it back on track. But... I like to um, go through this method with as few modifiers present as possible just to um, keep things linear. So this area is opening up a conundrum. We will solve it by jumping this area to a secondary point that we can expand upon. I mean, keep in mind with the triangle, you can always just call it and make it a redirect, but subdivision is going to do that for me. So. We don't even have to bother with that. So let's take a moment and look at this and so far so good. Let's grab this edge, control click this edge and 
we have a solid bevel. Hopefully people will just get what that means from now on whenever I say it, but whenever you mess up your bevel past the default settings and there isn't a quick hotkey to reset it, what else can you call it than solid? So here we've set up our geometry for this first level. So let's call this uh, topo solve cylinder and we'll save it and we see that this is the third iteration of getting into this. So let us unmark everything and because we haven't quadrified everything, let's put a triangulate on it. And then from here, we can actually put a subdivision, but I feel that there's still an issue happening with dots and subdivision. So we're still in the process of checking into that. So I'm just gonna toggle off dots so we can look at the area that matters and we see that we have survived. So if you're at this point, you can give yourself a pat on the back, except for this part that looks like it. Anos. So let's continue on. One cylinder is easy. That cylinder is going to be a problem. So I'm not even going to deal with that. And by not deal with that, I mean, we are going to activate dots and we're just going to bring a dot from view because we're in dynamic dots, create a circle, and we're just going to recircle this. And because our mesh is mirrored, we need to move it above and let's just apply visual geometry to mesh and mesh machine still taken over. Today's just mesh machine day. However, I've grown on this. Um, you know, sometimes in edit mode, I do want to just do a simple quick and done mirror. So let's shift A at another cylinder, SX, and let's bring this back and let's scale it up so it's more annoying. You know, maybe there, there is maximum annoying to me. In fact, that's so annoying. I'm actually very annoyed with the situation I've just given myself, but let's solve it. Like I said, we've got to that first checkpoint and we were patting ourselves on the back, but to truly get to that level, you, know, you gotta just keep punishing yourself with geometry. I wanna show you guys some of the stuff that I'm actually failing on, you know, because I can't model anything. I can only model things I practice over and over. But there's some things that I would really like to be able to solve like a car engine. So let's look at this. We have a solve on top of a dirty, <laughs> dirty union uh, is what we'll call it. Uh, also a good name for a metal band. We could slide this and make this our secondary perimeter, but you know, it's too early for that. So I'm just going to slide it. And this is going to be the integrity holder for all of this because we're about to have to get a little experimental and make some hard decisions. For example, anytime we move one of these cylinder spans, we want to make sure there's some geometry actually protecting us from the weight of that decision because that's a really hard decision. So are these. The decisions will get harder and harder as we go. But, you know, based off of all the things discussed in previous videos, hopefully everyone is equipped to make these decisions and that's the goal of this content to just get everybody equipped to be able to make a topological decision if you had to you don't even have to but one day you might have to especially when you really want a particular form to work and the only way to make it work is to negotiate with your geometry you know unlike terrorists um, we'll negotiate with some geometry in fact, geometry can't be terrorists. <laughs> we, we created them and, and trained it and put it there. There's no way. Never mind. Sorry. Um, let's select these two and merge at last. And we're just doing it all the way around. And as you see, you know, you could exit the video now because this process is actually very easy, especially when you work on it in a controlled state and everything has geometry around it, protecting your consequences from being seen by the rest of your geometry. So we're able to start making choices that kind of sacrifice the integrity of our cylinder here, but we're able to get away with it because who's, who's this geometry going to tell the area next to it's also compromised. So, 
we're going to add a loop, form this connection, grab these two, make connections, and let's just bring out our boy knife. and begin working our way to the back, letting the points of our new cylinder be our guide because we don't want any smoke from anything else. So let's just keep it simple. And this is simple, you guys. Simple to me because we are, you know, let's, uh, let's use some hops tools. Uh, we can go into select, press M for merge, and we can start using some merge to consolidate some points. There's no real reason that I'm um, doing everything vanilla, except, you know, I just love vanilla. It's important to make sure vanilla is perfectly fine. And whenever we can't click to gravitate the right point, we can just click to make the connection. We can press C to cancel, hold control, shift click in order to slide things around on the surface. Whenever it comes to select tool, holding shift in order to make connections, I consider it a prototype of the idea that we truly have in mind, which is um, like a topological correction of sorts. Because, you know, as you could probably tell from my content by now, I ain't got no time to retopo. I mean, I could, I could retopo and it would be so much easier and our lives would be done. So we'd be talking about uh, flow theory there, but really I already modeled this piece once. Why am I going to do it again? I mean, I could do it again, but why well, do it again? Especially when I could do it again later um, and go really low, as in like game risk topology, where everything can be simplified to triangles a lot more readily because there's less of a need for having geometry flows. But this flow is actually what I would consider you know, like a subdivision flow, because all we're trying to do is just flow with the subdivision. Hello, fellow kids. And we're just sliding in our geometry. And as we work this surface, we know that our job is nearing done. So let's just jump straight to this raft slide this area, maybe slide this area, really making some compromising decisions here. Um, maybe not even the smartest decisions, but we are right in front of our goal. So a little bit of um, erraticness is uh, tolerable. So let's make this connection and let's also make this connection but these points all need to be consolidated here, which we can slide over and then make this connection. And so if we just begin kind of simplifying this area a little bit, we can make sense of what we have, which is two unions meeting. We still need another union to happen here, but we don't need it to happen all the way around. So we can terminate it short, causing a bit of a junction pile up here. But like I said, hard decisions will have to be made in order to have things flow the way that you would want. In fact, we could lower to auto smoothing and that will just fix the shading. And we look at our unsolved side and we look at our solved side and we see that we're probably on the right track because everything looks good. At this point, I keep wanting to dissolve, but it's so important. It just doesn't know it yet. But let's um, unravel its destiny, which is us sending it along the side into this edge, which was just kind of an integrity placeholder. So we can slide it in, slide it out, And we have a shape going all the way around. So far, so good. And at this point, we're going to have to begin making those hard decisions I was talking about. How hard? That hard. Not very hard, I guess. But still a decision to be made.
How do we want to solve this area? I will just settle for a try for today, but we can make that a quad and dissolve that, giving us a junction in this area. Solving this for good. Let's save the file because I don't want any squirrely business to happen. You know, when you're in the process of cleaning up a mesh, that's probably the one time you don't want Blender to crash. It's like, come on, I'm using vanilla tools here. Why are you sending me to my desktop? That's why you gotta make sure your desktop has something nice to look at. So when you return to it, you don't wanna punch your screen out. So I'm gonna just grab this area and we're just gonna press E and extrude, E, extrude again, just to create something like that. And let's press E, X, and this sort of modeling is just too easy. I should have used uh, booleans in order to set up a situation we have to solve. I apologize for linearly working. So we look at this from top view and we see that this area is compromised. Can we get a dot there? No. Can we locate the cutter? Yes. This is the cutter that created that area. I'm just going to select the faces and dissolve it. And we're going to use static dots. So that way we can pause these dots and then just basically draw a circle where it was and we'll eat a little bit of its lunch but we want to make sure that we have the right mesh selected can't express how important that is especially when you're doing jump off dots I admit it could get a little confusing and how much trouble do we want do we want so much trouble that we're having to solve the inside of this cylinder is it that kind of video? No, no, it's not. I'm not going to do that to myself. Um, so we'll just cut it a little short. Let's control A, visual geometry to mesh. We can tap into edit mode. Let's just use mesh machine to gesturally flip it over to the other side. And, you know, quiz time. How do we solve this? Control T, Alt J. You know, how do we solve this? Well, we have a nice flow going to the correct edges which is part of those in-gun rules that I always talk about, meaning that we can press Control T, Alt J. So if you're following the in-gun rules, you'll have a proper flow that you can get in and clean up. So this is what we're looking at so far. Let's save our file and just add a few levels of subdivision. And we see that every area that we did not touch properly just gets eviscerated. So let's grab these and we'll just press Control T. Alt J just because we happen to meet the magic count and we can do the same thing here. I could also add a triangulate, but really let's just solve it. Call it a day, except it's not a day. It's just us getting to this level. And I see the occasional lump in the surface that makes me question my topological choices. However, like I said, hard hard decisions you know sometimes you you survive with a few scratches and scrapes and bruises but the most important part is surviving in fact i'm going to turn off edit mode display because edit mode display is the devil and let's also remove any doubles that are present one vert was a double and this is what our shape is looking like so far this part still looks terrible so I'm just going to bevel that. Something like that. And we can just delete this face. Select these two and grid fill. Use F9 to roll it around until it's some, somewhere proper. And basically this is our shape that we've created so far. So right now we're at this interim step in the process where we haven't quite completely solved it for subdivision, but we do see that we are surviving subdivision, at least with the transitions that we've set up so far. So let's set up another level of cylinder just to add to the madness. For no reason at all, I'm choosing 32 round cylinders because they're just default, but you know, let's change this to be you know, 18 and we'll change our alignment to be view and let's get this one to survive a level of subdivision. You know, sometimes whenever I'm modeling these, I will specifically scale things up to a point where it's annoying in a way that I know will cause me great pain. For example, right here would actually cause me great pain with the solve compared to giving myself something low ball and easy like this, where I have uh, a flat to solve, a upper flat and a um, flat going around in order to solve. I even gave myself a little room to breathe, which let's um let's make it painful right so 
not saying I'm searching for pain, you guys, but I do like to add a little bit in every solve just to see if it could be solved. So with this cylinder, I'm going to inset it um, just for later, make it a little easier for ourselves. Let's enable vertex snapping with control shift tab. And we're just gonna bring this piece in and something like that should give us a adequate amount of pain. We wanna go ahead and do a little bit of solving for these areas where we use our solid bevel to give some spacers in here. And so now we have way fewer rounds that we're about to be solving in this convergence. So looking at our mesh, we have no mirror modifier. We can select both of these, press Q, Boolean, Union, Fast didn't work out, so let's press F9 and jump over to Exact. Exact didn't quite work out, but it worked out. You know, it worked out in Blender terms, which is the best we can ask for. So let's now solve this piece into our equation. Well, it actually is a little easier than it looks because we already have a nice perimeter loop that we can hijack for our own ends. This is now our hashtag. And we'll just form a solve similar as such. And all these um, areas are gonna become hard decisions. So as we simplify, the decisions that have to be made will also have to be simplified. But solving this will make no difference. I mean, the less rounds on the cylinder, the less I have to talk about. I mean, we could talk about solving eights and 16s and the difficulties that arise with them because you know the lower the geometry is that you're working with the subdivision, the more simplicity you're gonna to wanna to introduce to your workflow in order to keep control. Because you know with these higher solutions, you can definitely get a little bit experimental because with the more geometry, the flatter the uh, curves go. So that's also something to take into consideration, but still solving and surviving sub D is solving and surviving sub D. So we're looking at this and we have some weird flows happening, but we are protecting what matters, which is our newest kid on the block. Might wanna do a little bit of sliding just to relax. Everything that's happening with these transitions based on previous subdivision experience. Also, I'm gonna save the file just because we don't want any weirdness. And let's begin bringing our boys home. And over on the other side, we have wives waiting for these verts that we just brought in. All of them have wives. And just like that, they're paired off and it's done. So we have some clusters. How are we going to deal with these? Well, I'm just going to jump back into select tool, but press M to go to merge. And we're just going to start simplifying some areas via click and drag. And this is where some hard decisions will begin to have to be made, but that's fine. Let's make a connection there just so convenient to be able to do it inside of merge. I mean, I'm sure to new users, some of these select tools can seem a little strange, but they're conceptual. So don't fall in love with them. Their final forms are yet to be decided upon. So right now, the more I use it, the more I just get acquainted with it on different situations and think about what I want to keep, what I want to take. But I truly believe that the final version will have no modes and will just be a single tool that accomplishes one goal. Massive topological correction. Let's give this one extra loop for the parameter because we're about to compromise this with triangles. Let's make some merges, hard decisions, but they're on flatties, which sounds a little rude, but flat surfaces I tend to really relax on the solutions that I try on them because you can get away with so much. They're just surfaces. You could leave end guns on it because it's a big flat. 
but let us continue. And we're about 25 minutes in. I was worried that this video is like going to take several hours to do because it's such a um, advanced topic, but I guess I'm warmed up and on fire from the previous content, but I do want to show some really challenging assets over the course of this uh, particular event. So let's add a loop, but we see that that loop isn't going to work out. So let's add a loop here. Let's cut our loop short with a subdivide here, which will allow us to basically create the flow that we want. And when we get to the inner circle, we're, there, there's no room for funny games. So we got to make some hard decisions very quickly. First of all, how many rounds does this thing have? And how many rounds do we need it to have? This loop will not be needed on the inside of this circle. There's already a simplification happening there and there, meaning that if we grab this and we enable our statistics, we'll see that we're still uneven because the simplification probably need to be the other way. So we're at 18. That means we could hit a um, checkpoint where basically we grab this and grid fill and extrude that back and call it a day and pretend that we did not just create a circle with two triangular junctions on the very perimeter itself. So let's undo that and really evaluate what we want to have going on. Meaning I want to have this reduced before it gets there. So still the same solution. I don't know why it brought me a different solution the second time I used it, but let's see, looking for something completely even just works with me. So let's shift click mark. We'll press B to protect this boundary, which we see causes a little bit of quad compression, but meh, it's a uh, flatties anyways, no flatties, please make a shirt for that. and just offsetting some of these loops and thinking about better solutions like turning both of them into a diamond quad redirect and just like that we have now solved that area so we're one two three four cylinders deep on this thing let's just use mesh machine and we'll turn off dots to add subdivision and turn off wireframe and this is what our shape is looking like so far. So let's grab this edge and this edge. And let's shift click mark. We can press B. And now that area is tightened up and let's also do the same here. Just selecting all of these. And as we get through this, we're no longer going to have to need triangulate to um, help us make it through the subdivision. But if you can't tell by now, triangulate will help any mesh survive subdivision because triangles are just so much more easy going whenever it comes to subdivision than ingons. Ingons are just going, Blender will figure it out. Just put it like that. You won't like the solution. You'll be like, Blender, why'd you come up with that? I don't know. We could simplify this area. Let's mirror that to the other side and really think about what our solutions are looking like for this area. We could begin getting a little bit more defined with this because we are near done, but you know what I'm going to do is insert another cylinder in there just to be a weirdo and extra with this video. So let's remove the subdivision and let's just look at it from this view and take it up one more level of madness. So 18 rounds, right? Let's change it to 24 and let's align it to the view. So you can thank someone on Twitter for mentioning this. I was just checking the comments of previous tweets just a moment ago. And how hard do we want this to be today? Do we want it to be so hard we have to solve that? Maybe solving something like that will actually be fine versus the other situation, which was looking a little like hell on earth. 
So I'm going to select both of these meshes and perform a union. And let's just use a little box cutter. Also, let's what was the rounds on this cylinder? 24. Let's just be um, silly. Let's just cut it with 32 rounds. Because we don't care. It's not, it's not my mesh. Well, it's not your mesh, but it is my mesh. My mesh, my problem. So we'll press B, Shift F to do a reverse bevel. And with that, we can now call it a day. I'm going to walk away from this because this is just too much for me. I can't handle doing another cylinder. Just kidding. Once you stop complaining and get in there and just do it, you'll find that it will be over in a record amount of time. So we just select this. We bring sanity to this area. And because we're using uneven rounds, we're going to be getting very weird with our solution. Like I said, the goal isn't perfection. The goal is to survive subdivision. Which is its own art unto itself. I mean, all quad and subdivision friendly meshes, I feel are two very different things. You could request one and not get the other, vice versa. You get an all quad mesh that isn't subdivision capable, but just falls apart under the first sign of subdivision. But let's get in here and do this. All right, continuing on. We're just going to select all of these edges and force the flow, but really selecting all of them is too much work. Let's just select this edge, press control B to force the flow, and we'll just slide down here and try to make this into our new parameter. Our loops are unevenly numbered, so things are about to get very strange, but meh, that's life. Life is complicated. Life is a complex series of mesh decisions. You know, especially when you start simplifying people in your life into being meshes. It's like, you know what, I'm gonna delete this OBJ. No, I'm kidding. Um, but let us continue and not get sidetracked by comedic banter. So the flow we're creating is going to be very tight, but as long as we don't hit any of our previous flows, we'll be able to just keep on wrapping. Specifically defining what we want our flow to be, not really looking at the points of what we're dealing with, but the points of what we're actually trying to connect to. And that should give us a bit of linearity whenever it comes to this particular aspect of the process. So if we select both of these and press M last, select these two, form their connection. This is where some hard decisions will start to have to be made. So let us add another loop of mitigation and slide it all the way down. So that way our bad decision is at least one away from our boundary loop. We don't want our boundary loop to be mired in poor decisions. So let's just decide, merge at last. Same with this area just the simplifications, all that we can really do. And when the case arises, we can also add geometry to begin mitigating some of these loops and begin creating our second loop of mitigation that will basically circumnavigate this form and hopefully come around to the other side after a little bit more redirection. We can send it through this area to be a buffer, allowing this flow to come unto existence. So let's just select those two and I'm going to press control shift B to bevel both and we'll dissolve, merge, and we now have a um, counter flow kind of starting. It's not the best flow, but it's the flow we got and dissolve some points, continuing to simplify. Subdivision thrives off of simplification and we'll be a definite wrench in your face when it comes to complexity and getting um, obsessive. If you get too obsessive, your obsession will uh, result in lumps. Like a, like a cartoon headache, you'll receive lumps all over your mesh. So mitigating the areas that lumps could possibly appear to areas of less importance and just ensuring that the areas that are the most important to this form 
come through, which are these transitional areas that we've been talking about for 34 minutes now. Maybe we don't need that one. Merge it last. Last. All connected and we're almost there. You know, I was about to say, look at us, we're almost there, but we're not. We're almost started. Something I also say to people all the time. People are like, man, I'm so done. I'm like, you're so started. Like the process for you has just begun. The true fight begins now. You know, maybe something like that. But we're just compromising to make this work. So it's going to be a very tight fit by the end. And so we're getting closer. You know, great fear during this process, always, you know, always respect the geometry. But before we know it, we will be at the finish line and we will have merged in four cylinders into this, two of them of different sizes. A couple of more dissolves. This area can go up here and that area can also go up there. And we have one more road to traverse, but let's take a look at what we have so far. You know, sometimes it's good to pull back and just realize that okay I don't think I worked on this flow in this area that's why it's looking uh, silly yeah I don't know if I ever told you guys the story uh, there was one time I was taking a call, uh, phone call back when I was on tech support and that's going to compromise our perimeter do we want to do that do we want to compromise our perimeter maybe want to slide that away a little bit but these, que these uh, questionable topological choices with us having to make shortcomings, you better believe it's going to come back to haunt us. Subdivision plays by a specific set of rules. A set of rules that I, almost I don't completely understand. I mean, I understand that it turns one edge into two and does a uh, smoothing in between, but I always feel like there's more to learn about subdivision and how to truly get a good use out of it so with this area we have to make some hard decisions do we want to just get rid of this entire perimeter loop we probably could which will allow us to do something like this so the perimeter is still protected at the exchange of a tribe being created in that area but the most important part is that we managed to save the boys club with all this topology. Now, correcting this particular area, let's um, correct this, Control T, Alt J, and that's that. We're gonna slide this loop in and this loop in, and let's tab into edit mode and gestural jump it to the other side, and we see that we have junctions on the mirror point, which I hate. I never like doing that, so let's not do that. Today is not the day I start doing that. However, the opportunity has arose. Sometimes you just have a try there and the opportunity to terminate that try will arise later and you're just not completely aware of it. Like right there, I was um, in dire need of a termination point for some triangular geometry and the need just arose by us just leaving a kind of temporary Thing there so now let's mirror it to the other side and now we actually have the mirror point being preserved which we never want to sacrifice we're looking inside we see multiple holes in our cylinder and let's just jump back into object mode and throw a level of sub D on it and we see that one area was not discussed and that was how are we going to convert this area so because this is between mitigations we can just solve it as we as we can, you know, kind of a uh, whatever solve. But every time it fails to have a nearest junction, I'm just going to try it. 
and then for everything else that has a connection we'll just make it work like I said surviving subdivision not quad mania that's for one of these other topo lords out there but for me surviving is enough always press H when I mean to press J I might have a foot pedal on the computer someday where I can just hit J during this process or or a uh, way to yell it at the computer J you know like like um Pokemon he'll use leaf blast so let us look at what our result is now that we've formed that connection and let's also look at the wireframe and look at what is the messiest place of our geometry where we've basically had to use a try pretty much every four points in order to make this connection happen between this 32 round delicious interior and this 24 round less delicious exterior so let's also send that to the other side using mesh machine and we're now looking at our result so this is basically topo solve cylinder 03 going over basically the process of dealing with multiple merges at the same time and somehow getting to a at least slightly better result when it comes to transitioning to subdivision however there's some knots in here let's make sure all our normals are correct and remove any doubles And now that geometry is looking correct. So I'm always looking at this stuff with a critical eye, especially after recording. We could just merge like three more cylinders in this thing to see where we take it. And we realize that there's an area that we missed. So victory laps, victory laps, never take a victory lap. I mean, unless you are truly done when a client has paid you and deleted your contact information, you are free. So how are we going to solve this? Just kidding, that was a rhetorical question. The answer is obviously protect the darn perimeter and don't let any negative geometry breach our area. But I was about to say something. <laughs> don't let it, this geometry breach us. But yeah, we, we have this area and it's slightly, we could leave it like that and that would actually look good as well. But you know me, perimeter protection you never ever stop protecting the perimeter so we're just going to select it all the way around and roll the wheel once in order to properly space it and we are going to need to slide this area over slide this over and even though verdi merge is on it's um going to work in our favor what isn't going to work in our favor is this area that's just kind of undefined without anything to help it out. And we'll form that connection, which could be beneficial, but really we just need to terminate this connection up above. So I am going to add another connection which will turn this area into a quad, but we will turn it back into a try so we can turn it back into a quad. A little weird, but what else can you do? So that means we can place it for it here, create a connection, create another connection, both to quads. Now this area is solved and we can choose whether we want to have our try be in this area or if we want to have it one down, but really, having it there is probably more optimal let's mirror this to the other side and I was worried I wasn't going to be able to complete this video within 45 minutes and here we are at 44 minutes 14 and we're looking at the near final result of this extensive subdivision conversion process so like I said the goal of this is really to just give users a little bit more confidence when dealing with certain shapes and the conversion process whenever it comes to subdivision and also to let uh, vanilla blender users also know how it done how it's done no matter if you're using bull tool or some other tool or hard ops the result is still the same 
you just get in there, perform your corrections, maintain your parameters, and you'll be able to get your mesh to a satisfactory result. So let's just toggle off the wireframe, take a final look at our mesh, and things are looking pretty good.